Hey everyone, Troll here. Today we are going to cover one of the most important JavaScript interview questions and it is about JavaScript event loop. We'll learn what is event loop, why we need this event loop, what is callback queue, what is micro task queue, web APIs, why we need web APIs, and all the things related to JavaScript event loop. So a lot of stuff to talk, stick around, let's get started. Our tutorial consists from two parts, one for theory, the other one for practice. Personally, I prefer first talk about theory because after understanding how the things are working, you will be able to implement it, apply it to your practice, okay? This is our JavaScript ecosystem. In our ecosystem, we have source code. So it doesn't matter how many functions you are adding your JavaScript code, at the end, the .js file is your source code. And we have JavaScript engine. We already know that the responsibility of JavaScript engine to take, read, and translate your source code into machine instructions, okay? And JavaScript engine consists from a lot of components like parser, interpreter, compiler, etc. But right now we're just talking about the things we need to understand and they are stack and memory heap, okay? Call stack and memory heap. Uh, when you run your functions, your functions will be taken to the stack and will be executed, okay? Like in uh, last in first out principle. But when you are just running your a synchronous JavaScript code, like some sort of calculation, business operations, etc., that doesn't uh, relate it to the async nature, then JavaScript engine will be able to run the muscle, okay? Because when you run your JavaScript code, it doesn't mean that all the functionalities you added to your source code are JavaScript engine native functionalities. We have native functionalities and non-native functionalities. For example, for the window object, we have working with DOM model, set timeout, set interval, fetch, etc. They are non-native JavaScript functionalities provided by JavaScript runtime. We'll have a separate topic related to comparing JavaScript engine and JavaScript runtime. But for now, just focus that we have two uh, functionalities, native, non-native. Mostly async nature of JavaScript is non-native because JavaScript is a single thread blocking synchronous programming language. So when you see some sort of set timeout, set interval, working with the model, promises, fetch, etc., they are non-directly related to JavaScript engine. They are non-JavaScript engine functionalities and they need to be run somewhere else. This somewhere else is going to be our web API. So the window object, the big window object in browser, in Node.js, we have global, they are web APIs, okay? So when you run your browser in a console, just type window, oops, window, and you will see that in window, we have set timeout, set interval, clear timeout, clear interval, fetch, etc. All these functionalities, mostly they are related to DOM, etc. working with window, etc. And they are non-JavaScript native engine functionalities, okay? This is really important to understand. So when JavaScript engine see that there is some functionality, for example, set timeout, that's not related to JavaScript engine, it will forward it to web APIs, okay? And this functionality like set timeout, set interval, working with DOM, will be executed in web APIs. This web API is mostly written in CC++ and they allow, uh, allow us to extend JavaScript, okay? And of course, we have some sort of callbacks for set timeout, for DOM, set interval, callbacks are really important part of JavaScript. And when you run some sort of web API functionality, you mostly have callback for it. And this callback will be added to callback queue after Web API done with your functionality. For example, when set timeout is done, the callback will be added to callback queue. But uh, in JavaScript, we have promises. For promises, we have different sort of queue and it is called event queue, micro task queue, promise job queue, it has a lot of names, but just simply call it micro task queue, okay? Now we have callback queue, micro task queue. For DOM, set timeout, set interval, the things that are not returning promise, they will be added to callback queue. But the things that return 
promises will be added to micro task queue. The last element in our pipeline is going to be event loop. Event loop is a low level written application, simple application uh, written in C, C++ and the responsibility of it to just check our call stack to see if it is empty or not. Why? Because when you run your native JavaScript a engine based functions like, uh, I don't know, the calculation, the business operation, they will be added to call stack to be executed in LIFO principle. Okay. For example, you have method one, it calls method two and it calls method three. Then uh, the first method three will be done, then method two and method one. We have LIFO principle for our call stack. The problem here is what will happen if we have this sort of set timeout working with DOM model and promise based mechanisms. So we have queues for them and event loop will check this queues first priority is on micro task queue okay and then if micro task queue is empty we'll take information from callback queue and move it to call stack to be executed that's the final scenario how our um, javascript ecosystem is working with javascript engine and web apis Great, now let's switch to our practice. In our practice, we have simple HTML file that consists from empty script. So I'm going to have three types of functionalities, one for native JavaScript engine functionalities, synchronous functionalities for non-synchronous, for async functionalities, like I'm going to have set timeout and one for promise to see the priority of running these functionalities, okay? so function it is our um, sum i will have only simple really simple examples to explain the things okay so i have just a sum function here and first plus second and the other function is going to be a wrapper over our console we have some sort of message and what we're going to do we are just printing our message these two functionalities here are simple javascript functions and one more function i'm going to have here is going to be our set timeout okay and you see for the second argument i provided zero it should immediately be executed um, we are thinking that it will be immediately executed so let's just simply console log uh, set timeout function done and the other one is for our promise new promise i will just use resolve here for executor okay and let's just simply console log promise is done and check this out i am just resolving it so 45 as you know the executor will be immediately executed this is really important but the things related to promise like then catch will be added to micro task queue so i am waiting this result here result and let's just console log here is promise result and this is our result simple result so what i'm going to do first i am printing operations started okay what i am planning to see first we'll see operations started and then somehow the first plan is to see set timeout but that's not actual like this and then our promise okay and let's call our sum 4567 let result and print this result print this result so you need to be careful here because we have three types of functions we have simple synchronous operation here set timeout will help us to interact with web api and add the callback to callback queue and for the promise this then will help us to add it to micro task queue so let's just uh, go to our browser right click inspect and see the output so let's one by one compare 
First, operations started is completely okay. The second one was to see set timeout function done. But somehow we are going to see that we have promise is done. This is really important because this is asynchronous operation and this asynchronous operation will be moved to web APIs to be executed, okay? It doesn't matter if you set here zero or 4,000, it really doesn't matter. And we have continuation non-blocking operation. It means after this run, we will switch to this one, but we will not see the execution. This code will be moved to web APIs and next we'll see this promise. And as we mentioned before, the executor directly in your new promise will be executed immediately. That's why we are seeing promise is done, but somehow we are not seeing the continuation. Here is the promise result. Why? Because for the promise, we have micro task queue and this then will be moved to micro task queue. Then it is also asynchronous operation, non-blocking operation, and we are able to see our print data. And at the end, system will check our micro task queue and callback queue. The priority is micro task queue. So we are seeing here is promise result. And the last one is callback here so set timeout function is done that's how we are applying the theory we learned before to the practice well that's pretty much all about event lob i try to explain everything as simple as possible if you want to learn more if you want to see more videos related to javascript interview questions just don't forget to subscribe to our decode bytes youtube channel and i will see you in the next tutorials